guys, it's Rose. Welcome back to Journals in Time and welcome if you're new. So today we are working on the topper for our Irish journal. I am so excited. It's coming together. It's coming together and I'm loving how it's going so far. So you'll remember we got these pieces sewn together the last time. I was talking that I wanted to use these and I had my focal point as well. Okay. So I've come up with a plan. I want to use the photographs that came with the Echoes of Ireland kit. These aren't all of them, but um, I think they were a bonus page with the kit. So I want to use the four of these ones. And I'm going to make a sort of a flip out photo book in here. Okay, so I've decided that I want to make the photographs look like they're inside old frames. So I want to have a surround here with the gold kind of outlining and maybe some other decor. But yeah, that's the basic idea. So I'm going to use this, this paper. This comes from an old encyclopedia. I had quite a few of the encyclopedias. I had quite a few of these pages. I think I may only have this one left. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. But there's enough in this one anyway to do what we want to do. So I will be covering the back of these essentially with photograph and the paper like so okay um but i want to do all the other things as well i want to get a gold line around here i would love to be able to do a letterpress technique for that but i don't have i mean obviously you need something to press into it in that shape and i don't have anything like that but we'll see what we can come up with i may be able to come up with something else for that um, but the first step I want to do is get these pieces prepared. Now, put this aside as well. I want to put some sort of a coating on these. And I thought about a gloss varnish and I decided against it. I didn't like the idea of the gloss. Um, this one is actually not going to be seen. So that's going to be laid down and glued onto the cover. So I want all of these images and my photographs covered with something and protected. So what I've decided to use for that is this stuff. It's acrylic wax and it comes from a company called Art Van Gogh in the UK. Now I've had this quite a while. Can't remember how much I paid for it but it wasn't very expensive at all. Okay so that's what that is. I'm going to give all of these things um, a coat of this. Um, I will get them all dried and I'll come back to you guys, okay? Okay, so they're all prepped now. I've actually given them two coats each of that wax and I actually gave the front one three coats. It doesn't actually seem to make much of a difference from two coats to three coats, but I would definitely give it two coats, okay? And they, are, they have a nice shine to them now, but it's not glossy. Uh, I have one here that it's it was printed on different settings and I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> so I just used it as uh, a demo piece for you guys. So that's the part that has the wax on it. And then on this side, there's no wax. Okay, so you can see the difference. And it may not be very apparent on camera there, but it does slightly enhance the colours as well. And it makes everything look a little sharper, which I find very strange. Um, but I'll f I find that a lot of um, gloss mediums do that. Okay, so that's those all prepped. Now the next thing we need to do is get... I'm going to go about getting those cut down. Um, yeah. I'm going to... Okay, so I'm just going to get them down. I'm going to draw around them and then I'm going to cut them. They actually even look better already just for being cut down. Now I'm actually going to turn this over and I'm going to demo... Or demo. I'm going to trial a few things just to see what I want. I was thinking about maybe putting some corner stamps and heat embossing them. And all I'm looking for is just some sort of a decoration. So something like that. And that. I would do a better job of lining those up but we could do it in all four corners. Or we could do the two of those up there and something like this down here. So 
So imagine that on the other side in gold. I would bring these two up into the corners a little bit more. Maybe bring this down a little bit more. Okay, so let's say that that's a plan. Now, before I do that, I want to try and get a line of gold around here. Now, how am I going to go about doing that? Now, of course, the easiest way to do all of this would be heat embossing. And I'm wondering, do I want to do heat embossing or do I want to do foiling? This foiling might look a bit more authentic on these. The okay, first thing I need to do anyway is I need to make a sort of a stencil for this shape. Okay, so let's let's see how we go about making a stencil. I have here just a piece of very light, heavy paper to light card. <laughs> and I am going to draw around my shape. Okay, so there's my shape. Now, what I want to do is make a line about a sixteenth of an inch. Is it even sixteenth of an inch? So I'm going to go all around. And on each side, I'm going to move it approximately an eighteenth of an inch. So I did, a, I moved it down a tiny bit and did another line, put it back into position on that original um, line bring it across about a sixteenth of an inch, you can mark it for yourself, just bring it across, bring it up, bring it back to your original mark, mark where you want to bring it to, bring it across, and this is just my way of doing this, there's probably hundreds of other ways to do it. Of course, it'd be much easier if it was a regular shape and I could do it with um, dies and things. <laughs> That's that. Bring it back to the original mark and then bring it up. And that will give you, it won't be perfect, but it'll be pretty darn good. You have to um, join your lines in some places. And that's okay. Now, how to go about the next part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this whole thing and I am going to cut it to the outside line, okay? So now, and I'm going to show you on this side, we can get our photograph into position where we want it. So that's our photograph into position there. Now I'm going to tack this very, very lightly with some... And actually I'm going to turn this around. Haha. <laughs> Just to be clever. Okay, I'm going to tack it very, very lightly with some glue stick. Now because of the wax on this, it probably won't stick anyway. So hopefully that will stay in place for us. And then we can get this into place here and stick that down and then we have our stencil for our frame but we need to get our windows cut we need to trace where we want our photograph so I'm labeling this one this is number three I'm trying to keep them all kind of matched up just in case there are any slight variations so we're going to do a similar thing to what we did to make the frame piece for our gilding but this time instead of moving it up we're going to like instead of going outside our line we're going to bring it inside by about a sixteenth of an inch okay just enough to have that little lip come over the edge of the photograph okay so we'll do the top bring it back up to the original line Bring it up a sixteenth from the bottom, mark that, and don't forget we're trying to make these look like they are old, vintage, they're not, they don't have to be perfect because things then weren't perfect, they weren't all done in factories and things, and even when they were done in factories and things there were variations and discrepancies and they were allowed to be there. So we're going to not worry about perfection, okay? So we have a similar 
situation here where we'll need to join up our lines and all we're doing is just <coughs> bringing that curve around to meet our line coming down here okay and same here curves are notoriously hard for things like this um they don't kind of work i mean you need to shrink the curve from every side and it doesn't work doing it this way but you can just draw them in afterwards it's not a deal breaker so we're gonna have just enough to cover the very very edge of that photograph okay so that's that one drawn out we'll get the rest of them done and get them cut out Okay, so just as an explanation with the last one that I'm doing, I've all of the other three cut out, as you can see. So, obviously we're cutting to the inside line here, but in order to preserve these pieces, because I'm being frugal with this, because I have very little of it, I'm just taking out a little notch. Normally we do a big X here and we cut all around, but I'm just taking out a little notch, getting my scissors in there and cutting around. Okay, so that's just a little tip if you want to preserve as much of your paper as possible. Lots of the time it doesn't matter, but sometimes we do want to kind of keep it if it's a special paper for some reason. Okay, so I'll fly through this one. Okay, so we have four frames. Now, a little bit of damage on this one. Not going to worry about it. It's totally fine. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get our little um, gold frame piece which is here so we're going to stick this down somehow we're going to get these kind of situated together just like so now there is going to be some discrepancy uh, because they're all slightly different shapes and sizes but that's okay gonna take some pieces of washi tape I'm gonna get this stuck down to the table as well okay just to stop any movement going on. And then I am going to get this stuck down. And then we want one of our photographs. Because remember this is going to give us that right size. It's going to come slightly over the frame itself. Now putting the tape onto this piece means that we're going to have a slight gap where the tape is but I'll just go back afterwards and um, fill that in once we have the best part of it done it should be easy enough okay so there we have that next thing we need is some okay so I tried a few different things um, with the gold leaf first of all I did it with the glue and while I got an okay result with that it's just not precise enough for what I'm trying to do today that would be something that I would definitely use in a junk journal for in in a different way for a different purpose but not for what I'm trying to do okay so, and that was with the tacky glue then I went along and I tried it with some sticky embossing powder from Ranger now I got this a long time ago for this particular purpose for foiling I never really had great results with it not for the kind of foiling that I'm trying to do again trying to do today um, it does and can give you a nice um, kind of grungy vintagey effect sometimes okay so what happens with this when you heat it it turns into a sticky substance okay it melts and it stays sticky but it doesn't melt very kind of clean and flat the way a uh, clear heat embossing does. So, um, I did it, I, I put on my powder, I heated it, put on my gold foil, didn't like it. So what I went and did then was I went and put it through my laminator. And that really did kind of flatten it down, but it also spread out the powder underneath. The heat remelted it and it spread out underneath. And again, while useful for some other kind of purposes in journals and all the rest of that, not good for what I'm trying to do today. So, I went back to an old favourite and I did the heat embossing. And I'm much happier with that. I would love to have used the foils, but, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out the way you want it to. So we're going to go ahead and do them all with the heat embossing and I'll go through one of them now with you. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go purpose of this um, 
doing all these layers is just to kind of get the straight lines really that's the most important thing I think for this look to work but we can adjust and fix things as we go so I'm just getting my ink down in there being as neat as possible about my lines trying to really not get it underneath that um, paper at any point we can lift this now and we can see what we have that's the great thing about these inks as well you can actually see what you're doing so I'm just going to join up those lines and it's not quite thick enough on this side so I'm going to fix that and I'm going to join it up here where the tape was just going to take this out of the tape turn it around and just do any fix work that I want to do and all I'm trying to do is to just keep those lines as straight as possible and I think that looks pretty good I might bring it out here a tiny bit okay look good yes now I am going to do my stamping as well so I have my little corner stamp here that I want I'm going to get it up in the corner here and up in this corner here last but not least get our strip our lovely pattern strip and we'll get that situated down here okay but that is perfect okay so we need our powder I think I'm going to really like these guys. Ah, here it is. Get this on. Okay, so we're looking pretty good there, except for those two little stamps in the corner. And all I'm going to do there, I'm taking a pokey tool and I'm just delineating the bits that have filled in where it shouldn't have. Okay, so that should work. And we can get it heated. That bottom stamp is perfect. Okay, so that is what we got. Perfection. I love it. Love, love, love it. Okay, and where's our photograph? So that's the photograph we were using. It is going to sit on top of it like so. And yeah, I think that is fabulous. Okay, so I'm going to go off and get the last two done and I'll be back. Okay, so that is all four done. So, first one, let's see, number one. Yes. And number one. And number one. Here we go. Okay, so that's going to go on there. That's going to be underneath that. They're going to look fabulous. Love it. Could have done the um, little borders a little bit narrower, but I'm totally okay with that. That's fine. So, next thing we need to do is to affix our photographs to our frames. So I'm just going to make sure that I have all the right numbers with all the right numbers because I have them all marked. And so we have number one with number one. I'm going to get a tiny bit of glue around the edges. Normally you would put them on the smaller ones, but I'm going to be safer and put it on this one because we have such a tiny lip to glue. Okay, so just get a tiny bit of glue all the way around this frame. and sit your photograph 
into place. Just making sure that it's just inside the frame on all sides. Gonna hold that down. There's a little bit of a, a, a bump here, a wrinkle in the paper. So I'm just going to hold it down. Just make sure it's secured. Yep, that looks pretty good. Now this one, I'm going to put this underneath some books just to flatten it out because there is that bump in the paper. And I'm going to go and do the exact same thing with the other three. Okay, so the first two are out. They're dry and ready to go. Don't they look fabulous? And the next step is to get them... Might be to get them onto these, but uh, I do want to hinge these together as well. But I want to try and maybe get some gold leaf on these. I should probably have done that before I did the wax coating. But I kind of really want it on there. What to do, what to do. So, I'm just going to take tiny little bits of glue and get them on there randomly. And see what happens. Now I'm going to do all of these and I'm actually going to put them through my laminator. Mm, that might not be a good idea either. All experimental, but we'll see. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing here that can't be printed again. So, what, what's the harm in experimenting? Okay, so I've put one of these through the laminator. Let's see. Did it ruin it? Did it make it better? Oh, look, it actually appears. No, it's not. I thought it was actually sticking where I didn't have glue, and it is actually. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if that's because of the wax. Now, completely not what I wanted here, but very interesting discovery. Gonna have to reprint this one, I think, and do it again. That's okay. Okay, so I won't be putting the rest of them through the laminator. And why did I put it through the laminator in the first place? Well, because I thought it would give this nice flat um, finish to it because of the pressure. And because I didn't want to wait for it to dry. Because <laughs> I'm a child and I'm a patient. And also because I now apparently know that it also entertains cats, which is very amusing for me. <laughs> they just sat there staring at it the whole time while the paper was going through. Very funny. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm going to let the other ones dry another little bit while I'm getting this printed and prepped again. And I'll be back to you guys shortly. Okay, so I went and I got that reprinted. Um, I got the other ones kind of cleaned up. And they just have those touches of gold. Beautiful. Just a little something extra. So while we're waiting on this to dry, I've been going ahead with my hinges. So, uh, what I've done here, I've taken a piece of that same green card that we used for the photo mats and I have just glued it to a piece of fabric. Just going to get this trimmed out and we'll make some hinges. Now I know that this is the right height for my pieces. I cut it to the same height as those cards. So, all I need to do really is to cut it into strips and mitre the corners and then we can start assembling. Oh, my favourite part. This is going to make a really nice um, interactive journal topper. I love the idea of using the photographs inside because, I mean, really at the end of the day, Ireland is all about the people, isn't it? You know? So, yeah, I think that's quite fitting. Okay, so put those aside. Now, all I really need is about three quarters of an inch, I would imagine. Uh, if I divide this into four, what do I get? Yeah, so just dividing it into four gives me pretty much exactly what I want. So I get out my paper trimmer and I'm just going to cut this into four pieces. So it cut almost all the way through that, so we just need to trim that a little bit. So I put the fabric behind the paper just to 
strengthen it because if it gets a lot of use the paper will wear a lot quicker than fabric. So it was just a really thin fabric. I should have scored these as well while I had them in the trimmer. I can do that very shortly there now. And with something like this I really do find it so much easier to score than to just try to fold them. Particularly with the fabric on the back of them. So let's get them scored first. I don't know, should I even bother with this or should I get out my scoreboard? But we'll try it with this. Try and get them roughly half ways. Perfect. Awesome sauce. Okay, so I'm going to mitre these corners. I'm just folding them up against each other and I'm just going to snip a piece off the end and that's just to hide um, to, or to prevent any little corners from showing when we attach them. So again do that for all four. These are actually still very slightly damp. I should probably not be working with them right now but we know how that is. Okay so they're all prepped and ready to go. Let's have a look at this guy and see if that's ready to go. Have our little brush. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like the scratchy look of this one here. Well, actually, this one over here has a similar vibe. Okay. That is that. I'll be finding bits of gold leaf everywhere for the next three months. <laughs> At least it's pretty. <laughs> okay. So we have all of our pieces. Hooray, hurrah. Okay, so this is going first. So I've chosen where I want my images to go. And not forgetting that this one is going to actually be put down that way on the piece. It's not, that image is not going to be seen. So I need to remember that. Next step, just get them all glued down for now and put my hinges in as I go. So, my hinges are going to sit like this. And the next one, this isn't the order they're going in, I'm just using it to explain to you. The hinges are really not going to be seen much at all, okay? You're just going to see that much in between the pieces, okay? Just gonna see the bare amount. And when we turn it over, it's not going to be seen either because it's sandwiched in between the two pieces. <coughs> Perfect. Okay, so let's figure out which way they need to go. So that's going there. This one is going on the front. So that needs to be hinged to the back one. And then these two flip off here. So, yeah. So I want this one here. And it'll lift at this side. Let me think. <laughs> it'll lift at this side. So I want this turned around this way. Ah, get myself in a mess here now. Yeah, so when it's open out, I want it, all four photographs to be visible. And then it can be flipped back that way to see those two images. And obviously this image will be seen on the front. Okay. So that's going to be like that and that's going to be like that. Oh, we have a stack going on here now. And that's going to be like that. And that's how it's going to appear. Okay. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is to get the back hinged to the front. Now I'm just realizing there's a little bit of heft going on in there so I may need to adjust one of my hinges so let's find the widest one that I have and all I'm going to do here I'm going to put another score line either side of this score line that's in it and I'm just going to make it so that it has a little bit more wiggle room So what that allows us to do then is to have a slightly bigger spine. I mean, just slightly. 
just to accommodate that extra bit of bulk. See, and when it's done, you can actually roll it up and down. You can see that there is that little bit of extra space in there. But still plenty of scope for our hinge to attach. Okay, so I'm going to attach it to this one first. So, it's going to attach on the inside like that. I'm going to leave it proud, just a tiny bit proud. In fact, I'm going to need to leave it where that, um, to where that other score marker is on this one. And we'll get that glued into place. So you can see I've left that one a little bit proud to allow for a bit of a spine, okay? Okay, so then with the other one, with the, the next piece to go on, which is the back piece, we have the option to sit all of our pieces in here. We can get our glue on our hinge, sit them in, and get our proper positioning here with the hinge. So it's going to be that much proud on the back. And that allows for plenty of scope for all of the pieces. Okay, perfect. Let's get that done. So that's the spine we ended up with in the end. Awesome sauce. Okay, next. Next thing I need to do is to get this image on in here. Now, when I'm putting this on, all I'm doing is making sure Obviously that it's lined up as much as possible, but lined up in such a way that it's not interfering with that hinge. Okay, now I'm going to do some double-sided tape on this and some glue. Mm -hmm. Because I can. <laughs> and it makes life so much easier. Okay, so that's that in place. Fabulous! Little bit of trimming to do just along the top. Et voila. Now, I said I was going to do the same with the back, but I can't do the back yet because I have another hinge to go on there. Aha! I'm glad I thought of it before I went ahead and did it. So, this piece is going to be hinged here to this piece. So, we're doing the same process again. Before we put these on, we're going to get our hinge in here like so and this just needs to be a regular hinge don't need to adjust that like we did with the first one just like that Whoop, come back and then i'm going to go ahead and get this hinge on as well so this is going to be hinged to this side so i'll be putting a hinge in here like this so it's going to be over those two pieces so that will lift up like so and this will flip out like so okay so are we are we getting that so one hinge to the inside that will be on these two one hinge out here and i actually don't need the last hinge i only needed three silly me um that will go there And then we'll come back and put these together. So I'll get the, the hinges glued in. I'll come back and I'll show you before we put the, the papers down. Okay. Looking good. Looking good. So it'll pull out this way then. See? See what I mean? So now we need to decide which photograph we want in here. And etc. etc. So I think I wanted this particular one there. And then I want this one here and this one here. Okay. Oh, I love it. I just, I love the idea of it. I don't know. Now I could have, and this would make a great um, idea as well. I could have made these as a series of cards that were tucked into a pocket or something in the on the front of the journal. That would have been amazing as well. But I just came up with this idea because I wanted to use this particular image on the front. And, you know. This is just what came about, but there are other ways that you could incorporate all of these. Okay, so I'm going to do these the same. I'm going to use double-sided tape, uh, a little bit of glue around the edges, and get them glued on. All right. Oh, my goodness, guys, it's nearly done. I'm so excited. 
<laughs> okay okay so the next thing is we need to figure out placement on this and things like that um just to show you guys as well i have i don't think i showed you this on camera um i have added a dangle on the side this is one of my teeny hidden scroll dangles um i will link the video either in the corner of this video or below or possibly both uh where, to where i made those so you open up you take off the pin you open it up and there's a little hidden scroll inside for you to turn it on so nobody would know it's there and this is removable as well okay it's got a little shamrock key with a beautiful green cubic zirconia in there can you see that okay so that is that um okay so we need to figure this out now mm -hmm. here is the closure that i was thinking to use on this now if i want to use this closure it's going to have to all be very precise which you know we can manage sometimes we can do that sometimes <laughs> sometimes so this piece would be attached to this it would flip up like this that stays there and this opens like that okay so that's the plan <laughs> need to get this piece situated first now I stuck in this piece of lace here because I wanted this plate to sit just on it. Unfortunately, I glued it in the wrong place. <laughs> or sewed it in the wrong place even. So, now I need to figure out, do I want to leave it there? Or do I need to move it? And you know what? I think I'm actually going to leave it. I mean, offset is something that we tend to not worry too much about. And just because it was the way I had intended it, or, or it's not the way I had intended it, doesn't mean that it's wrong. Okay. So then, I can get on with the business of gluing this piece on, or gluing this piece on. I think glue this piece down first. Just going to glue this into place with my tacky glue. I am not gluing right to the edges here. Um, I do like to leave things like loose like this, but still quite firmly attached, as in this piece is firmly attached with the sewing, but the edges are still loose. So I want the same kind of effect for this whole piece. So I'm going to glue onto the piece itself. And I'm just taking it in from the edges okay just like so okay I'm gonna get this glued down okay oh it's gonna be so fabulous I love it I may have to say that about my own things I love it <laughs> straighten up my mat here okay yeah gonna get this glued down and so while well, that's doing its thing there I'm going to prick this I want to get brads into all of the little holes the screw holes yeah I think I'm gonna go with those okay so let's get four of those out okay so one of the things that I'm not liking is how these are swiveling all around and they're going different ways I am going to need to glue these into place the way I want them because I'm not happy at all with them swiveling around like that uh, will I just tape them I could just tape them couldn't I yeah so while I am going to tape them I am also going to use glossy accents under the tape Because, you know that's just how I roll and I'm going to tape them with masking tape um, because that will give me a better surface for gluing just want to get those situated and staying right there so that's glossy accents get them straight now and get the tape down okay so I'm gonna leave those aside for a little while Okay, so I'm going to get this tape trimmed if I can. Actually, 
actually I'm gonna see if I can trim the legs of those breads with my scissors notice I changed scissors for that <laughs> yeah. they actually do cut with scissors who knew there you go guys you can cut the legs of your bread with your scissors awesome sauce no need to call in the mister woohoo <laughs> I'm sure he'd probably be delighted to hear that too. <laughs> Gonna use some super glue. I, I don't think I've ever, ever, ever used super glue in one of my projects to date. But it's the first time for everything and it dries so much faster than um, a glossy excess. So let's give it a go. Let's get some glue down here. Hold there for a moment. Make sure that it has good contact for a little minute anyway. Okay, that ain't going anywhere. Awesome. That looks pretty good. Now just to get this piece sorted. Let's get the trimming done anyway. Hmm. Now I'm just thinking about something that I saw in somebody's video. I think it was actually Mamie Made It Crafts. And she put a piece of card behind her piece. And I'm thinking that might actually be a good idea because it would also raise it slightly so that it goes in a bit better. So that it's not like there's there's quite a bit of a lip there between the two. Now there is scope for it and it's fine. I'm just thinking, would it actually be better to raise it? Might put a piece of chipboard behind there and just see. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna get this piece cut down. I don't want it always to this edge here because that edge kind of comes off of that lip that we have there. So I'm going to leave it in about that much. And that raises it quite a bit. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, let's get these glued together. Okay. Now, I'm going to get some ink on these. And I'm going to do them with a green ink. I'm going to use forest moss for this because it's a nice juicy pad. Just going to try and get the edges of it at the very least. Okay, I think that's good. Just don't want it to be very obvious from underneath. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now our double sided tape is going to work awesomely well on this, but not so much on the actual <coughs> metal. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to use super glue on this and for the actual card itself I can use my regular tacky glue Hooray. now my little bread legs are staying in place there which is awesome okay. so I wanted to go as far as possible to that side like that okay <coughs> so we can get our regular glue on here. Okay, so let's get this into place. Just there. I really hope this works out, guys. <laughs> oh, it looks so awesome. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love it. So we open it. And we open it. And we open it. Oh, fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, you guys. So there it is. Our interactive journal topper for our Irish journal. I love it. I think it turned out fabulous. Um, so enjoying this make. So all we have left to do is to start out that closure that I was talking about. And to go to the inside and sort out all the ephemera that we have in there, you know, get it dickied up. I have things like um, tags and things that need to be decorated and things like that. So 
I will probably do that a lot of that off camera unless there's something special that I'm doing I will probably do a lot of that off camera and you will see them in the flip through for the video or for the journal even so I hope you've enjoyed this make so far um do join me for the flip through of it I think my next video don't know if it's going to come before or after this video will be for the show some style collaboration over with Rachel and Bella Crafts awesomely exciting so looking forward to that um if I haven't already done it <laughs> I don't know I'm filming ahead at the moment um but yeah I don't know what's next I don't know what's next but that's it for me for today anyway guys I will talk to you all very very soon in the next video bye